Hello and welcome to Medicine in 5 Minutes. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is a series on my YouTube channel where we'll look at medical topics in the shortest space of time. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, drop a comment to show some support. Today in this episode of Medicine in 5 Minutes, we shall focus and look at high sprung disease. Remember that this is one of the congenital diseases that's going to present with intestinal obstruction in a child. So it's a congenital disease that's going to be affecting the gastrointestinal tract. It's going to be characterized by an absence of ganglion cells in the myenteric as well as the submucosal plexus. And often, the most commonly affected part is the rectal sigmoid area, but it may also involve the entire colon. And what's going to be characterized by this condition is that there's going to be an absence of parasympathetic action, and then this is obviously going to lead to bowel obstruction. It is often present in children below the age of one year, but sometimes the diagnosis may actually be made later on in life. And about one out of 10 patients have a comorbidity, which is Down's syndrome, and the prevalence of the condition is one out of 5,000 patients. Clinical features include abdominal distension, obviously because of the loss of the innervation from the ganglion in the distal segments of the bowel. You may have a delay in passage of meconium, and this is obviously the cause in 50% of the cases where children do not pass meconium, you should suspect that they may have high sprung's disease. There may be some chronic constipation and occasionally there may be overflow diarrhea. There may be vomiting which will be bilious in nature. And of course there may be a serious complication that is known as enterocolitis that may present with explosive diarrhea and potentially sepsis. Investigations include a barium enema x-ray which is obviously going to show a dilated proximal as well as a contracted distal segment of the colon. You may also order for a plain abdominal x-ray but this is less useful as compared to the barium enema x-ray and it may also show a dilated colon. Rectal biopsy is the definitive diagnosis of high sprung's disease as this is going to show you the absence of the ganglion cells in the myenteric plexus as well as the submucosal plexus. In the management of the condition, the first thing that you want to do before you surgically resect the bowel is you want to perform bowel irrigation to clear it out and to also reduce the distension. So you place a tube in the rectum, flush in some normal saline, and then this is going to exit through the same tube together with the bowel contents that are present. And remember that this is different from an enema because with an enema, the fluid is retained in the gut. And of course, after this is done, you perform surgical removal of the agonglionic bowel segment. The only problem comes when the, a large portion of the segment is aganglionic, meaning that you're going to have to resect a very large portion and it may lead to complications later on in life such as malabsorption as well as short gut syndrome. In individuals with enterocolitis, you want to first start on fluids as well as antibiotics. Thank you for taking your time to listen to this review lecture on medicine in five minutes discussing about high sprung's disease if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the channel drop a like drop a comment show some support share the channel and i shall meet you in the next video stay tuned sorry for the silence and we shall become more regular with more videos on the channel until next time my name is dr moses kazevu bye bye